Good evening. Welcome to Vibing with Ashley Live. I'm your host, Ashley Live. This is episode 220 of my show. And tonight's guest is the one, the only musician, engineer, producer, songwriter, Quincy Valentine. Quincy's musical journey began at age nine with a diverse background spanning pop, R&B, hip hop, and gospel. His artistry shines through his distinctive production flair and poetic lyricism. Quincy stands out with a unique blend of old school boom bap, I'm sorry, Quincy stands out with a unique blend of old school boom bap era and contemporary flair delivering sincere and soulful vocals. Quincy is in the house and let's get this party started. Hello. Quincy! Ashley, thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. How's your night going? Night's going well. Uh, it's been a bit of a crazy weekend, but this is, we're at, the, we're at the, the end of it, and I'm excited to be here. I'm so very honored for you to come on my show. So just a quick story for the people that are watching. I actually met Quincy through another one of the artists that have been on my show, Nia Marie. Nia, um, and you work together. So talk about how you first met Nia and how you continue to work with her. Uh, so it actually turns out we also work with another artist, Reese, who I've actually done, who I actually produced for as well. Yeah. And, and uh, so we had the band and then Nia ended up being the background singer for that band. She's good yeah. friends with uh, Juan Rongo, the, the guitar player. Yeah. And when she was ready to start uh, performing her own music, uh, she and Juan got together and they assembled the band. And we've been, I've, I've been rocking with it since. Yeah. Yeah. And Nia has been on the show quite a few times. And then from there, you and I met and here we are. So thanks so much for coming on the show, Quincy. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So I want to start at the very beginning of your life during childhood. Can you describe how your musical journey started? So I wouldn't say that I grew up in a musical family per se, but uh, my mother plays uh, played piano. And so I grew up with a keyboard being in the house. Mm -hmm. And so that was a large part of it. Uh, I, you know, as all kids do, when they see an instrument, they want to they touch it. Yeah. And uh, my, my touching it, I, I guess I had a natural inclination towards it, which, you know, added to that. And then right next door, um, my uncle, uh, was a rapper at one point. Well, I'm not gonna say was a rapper because he still does it. He just doesn't, you know, pursue it for as a career. Mm -hmm. But he was rapping and DJing, you know, just at the house sometimes, sometimes for parties and everything. And so having that both at home, the keyboard at home, and then going next door, and my uncle has the turntable set up and would sometimes record himself freestyling and everything. All of that definitely was played a huge part in where I am. Mm -hmm. I love that you saw your mom on the keyboard, but then your uncle was a rapper. And those are two things that you do still to this day. Right. Yeah. And I love that you mix them together because sometimes when I think of a pianist, I don't think of a lyricist. So I love that you kind of like took those elements from childhood and then that's who you are as an artist now. Yeah. Uh, it's just the conglomerate of all the different things that come together. Um, and it's amazing that you brought that out that I hadn't even thought about is that, yeah, I, those are my influences. Those are my starting influences. And yeah. this is what I'm still doing today. Yeah. So, okay. So you started out playing keyboard in churches to collaborating with various artists and even serving as a music director. How has your background influenced your approach to music production and your performances? So... I think it's the influence of just being around these different things mm -hmm. and the way that, you know, so there's no, there's nothing new under the sun. And so what we do is we emulate what we hear. Yeah. And I believe that the experiences that I have in these different areas all just kind of work together into, you know, what my sound ends up being. And um, even to the point of there's a there's a guitar player I, I've played with before. And he's like, I love playing with you because you play like a producer. Yeah. Uh, whereas a lot of people, they, you know, they're, this is where they, the, the different disciplines sort of tie together, where some people will overplay or underplay. He's like, you play just the right parts. 
because mm -hmm. you have because I have that experience with the production, but also um, with playing in gospel. You know, you have to within gospel in, in particular for playing for church, you have to make room for the vocalist. Right. And it, you have to fight the natural thing that you do as the beginner is to overplay. And I got to show how good I am and mm -hmm. it's play skillfully and tastefully, but leaves room for whoever's seen to be the spotlight. Right. And I like that because you have you when that guy said you play like a producer, like that's a huge compliment to you because he could just have another guy up there playing just like regular keys, like with no knowledge of just the other aspects of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's talk about the other genres, pop, R&B, hip hop and gospel. So you, you talked about how when you're playing gospel, you want to let the singer shine. But how do you navigate the creative process when blending those influences into your original music? So something that I recently saw Jacob Collier say is sometimes it's not all, always about what's pleasing, but sometimes you throw something that's a little bit left. Yeah. And that, that thing that's left, people are going to love it or they're going to hate it. But mm -hmm. that's what's going to draw people in. Yeah. And so I, 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 when I, when I, when I think about my production, I think of myself as a chameleon because I don't have a specific, this is what I do. Uh, but I believe that I adapt to whatever the needs of the artist, the songwriter that I'm working with it uh, are. And um, from there we'll, okay, this is the sound we want, but all right, well, maybe I could bring this little organ bit in here and, you know that'll that'll give a different feel that's still in the lane that that let's say a pop lane that's still in a pop lane but yeah. then adds just a little bit of a difference to keep things uh to keep to keep things interesting mm -hmm. yeah and i think because you have been in such a diverse group of music with different musicians you're able to pull different things from them and just you don't just hold yourself to one lane you're like I'm all of these things. Like I incorporate all different types of music. You mentioned Jacob Collier. Who are some other influences in your life musically? Wow. Uh, so, and it's it's going to span a lot of different areas. I'll go all the way from a Kirk Franklin to a mm -hmm. Ty Tribbett, uh, both gospel artists. Kirk okay. Franklin just being a, the the world renowned name that he is, but his dare to be different, right? And not you know just stick to the norm of what music was mm -hmm. um and then ty tribute in the same lane bringing other types of creativity um bringing even some like rock over to the traditional gospel sound uh daring to be different and so those would be my influences on from a live musician standpoint from you know coming up from earlier earlier ages and then uh i've also been influenced by let's say a 50 cent or a date or jay-z mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that you don't hold yourself to those specific genres. You look up to people that are doing amazing things that are pushing their, you know, they're genre lists because they use all these different influences in their music and that's just who they are. And the next piece of music they put out, you don't know which way it's going to go. Right. So I want to talk about the latest single Forbidden Fruit. Can you talk about the inspiration behind the song? Oh yeah, so Forbidden Fruit is spicy. Uh, <laughs> it is the spiciest song I have ever written. It might be the spiciest song I ever write, but we'll see. Uh, so Forbidden Fruit was, a lot of my music does tend to be inspired by real events. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular event, I had, uh, it didn't actually go anywhere, but you know how you have a, a sort of tension with somebody? Yeah. And I had that with somebody who was engaged and then later married, um, and it continued throughout that. And it's someone that I, someone that I was actually working with um, on music with, and it was like, all right, you know, I know that I can go here, but should I? Should yeah. I not? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's what. The, so that was the inspiration for that. And so we did the we. So we did the original version, which was live music, bob your head kind of thing, um, and shot a video for that. But we wanted to we wanted to take another attempt at it. And we're like, well, we don't want to just shoot another video 
just to shoot another video to the same music. Yeah. So someone on my team say, what, do I, what if you did an acoustic version? And the idea was really just for the video, mm -hmm. but the acoustic version came out so good that we were like, let's just make this a release. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you hear a piece of music, when you strip it down to the acoustic version, it's just a whole nother take on the song. It is. I, I amazed myself, honestly, because I thought, because the original version just has this bass line that I thought just drove the song. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do this song without the bass line. And I was like, all right, well, let me try. And I said, well, let me just forget the bass line, just sit down on piano and just play it. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what, this works. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so then you did a music video for it. So you show some behind the scenes about the music video. You were in like this very tiny space and you were talking about how it's cool to be creative. You don't really need that much space to do it. Talk to us about that. So the lovely the lovely thing about uh, camera work, which I'm learning more of, I, I also do live streaming and, and, mm -hmm. and video, of course, for myself, content wise. And so there's some things that I've learned there, but the wonderful things is there's a lot you can do with video to make things appear a lot larger than what they are. Right. And so we actually shot the Forbidden Fruit acoustic uh, music video at a space we, a spot we found on uh, Peer Space, mm -hmm. and it had three different rooms, yeah. which was just these little tiny, you know, cubbies of <laughs> sorts with props in them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so we yeah we use two of those of those spots, one where I'm playing the keyboard, mm -hmm. um, and, and the girl is kind of work, walking around me and you know and touching my face and everything, and then the second one when she's laying on the couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to just kind of circle it back to camera work, right? Because when you're in a tiny space. I mean, we didn't know that until you told us and you showed us that, but I love the creativity behind it because you think about sometimes you see these huge rooms you don't really need that much space like i think covid was taught us you can just kind of be in your own cubby do your own thing and it just kind of the camera work and just the zeroing in on maybe the side of your face or maybe the corner you know what i mean right yeah right and then just you know the small space also just added to the intimacy of what the moment was. Right. Where we did we definitely didn't need to show ourselves in a large room, but it was the closeness while also keeping the distance. And it was the perfect amount of space to, to pull that off. Yeah. And that's powerful because I feel like a lot of creatives need to know that. Like they think like you need to rent out this huge loft. And like, I'm not, not to say that that doesn't work because it can work given how you want to reflect it creatively, but it's just, it's cool for you to say that and for you to show people that because then they're like, oh my gosh, I only have like a like a 10 by 10 space to work with. And you can do a lot with that space when you kind of just let your mind run wild. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know you took a short break from being an artist from music and then you discovered your passion for it. So can you share a little bit more about this break? So I, so I had this period of time where I think I was trying to figure out what I was. Mm -hmm. And so I took a break from, uh, initially I took a, took a break going at the end of high school, going into college. Mm -hmm. I, you know, faith wise, faith is a huge thing for me. I'm a Christian and everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wanted to be more mindful of the music that I was, that I was creating. Mm -hmm. And, um, for, with that, I wasn't doing anything. And then I had a little brief stint uh, in college where I was doing Christian rap. And I didn't feel that that was the, the authentic me, um, at least pursuing that kind of area. Yeah. Uh, and so, and then I was also admittedly kind of intimidated when I heard some other people and I was like, what am I doing if this person is this good? You know, why would I bother? You know, I'm a great producer. Mm -hmm. Why don't I just focus on production? And so I focused on working with other artists on, you know, their on their projects and their songs. Um, meanwhile, all this time, I'm still writing songs. Mm -hmm. And 
things weren't moving as quickly as I thought they should have been. And it was like, well, do I keep waiting for other people to put out work that I've worked on so that I have something to show for myself? Or why don't I just use my own abilities and start putting something out? Um, this way now, I'm not waiting on somebody else to be like, all right, I put this out now. Okay, now I have a portfolio I can show, but now you're talented, put your own music out. Mm-hmm. and there's your portfolio and then and the work you do with other people is just an add-on to what you're doing already yeah yeah and that's powerful because i think sometimes as a creative you need to step back from what you're doing and say like do i really 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 want to be an artist because when you love producing and you're just like oh i can kind of just be in the background but i know what you mean by waiting on other people to get the project done. It's kind of like being in school and there's like a group project and there's five of us and Mm -hmm. one person holds on to it and they don't let anybody do anything else or they take (laughs) all the credit. And you're like, I worked on this song. When is this person gonna put this song out? Are they even gonna like credit me on it? Are they gonna tag me? Like, I think that's another thing that's important to talk about too, right? Right. you know, will they remember you to credit you? I, I, I actually worked on, I won't say I worked on the film, but I worked on some music for a movie. It's on the, it's on the end credits film, end credits, uh, for there's a movie on, on Tubi called, uh, I f- I'm forgetting the name, Empty Paradise. That's what it's called. And yeah, so the end credits music is something that I produced, uh, but all the people that I worked with, their names are on it, but mine isn't. <laughs> so, <gasps> That's Stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, wait, who who is responsible for that? I think someone needed to credit you. Right. And that became a miscommunication with the director where wow. the names got submitted to him, but my name got left off. That's messed up though. Yeah. You were part and of it. Like you were part of it too. Yeah, so it, it's it's a you know unfortunate situation, but I learned from it. All right, there's some things I need to be a little bit more directly involved with. Yeah. Um, because then that goes back to the to the waiting on other people thing. Yeah. Where um, even beyond that, there's songs that I've worked on. There's projects I've worked on that just never got released. Yeah. And, and you're just like, I work. I did these things, and like, you're probably. Are you still waiting on them, or you think you're? They're like never going to see the light of day. Oh, uh, they're never going to see the light of day. See, that's messed up because you put your time and effort into it, and you're like. Ugh. I don't have anything to show for it. So yeah, I think it's important to work with other people, but also have your own thing because then your name's all over it. And because you do the producing, the engineering, like the vocals, like that's a very powerful thing too, because then you don't need to wait on other people to get your project done. Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's powerful right there. Cause sometimes, and I was watching, I was watching something the other day and they were saying, They were saying, yeah, I wanted to learn how to engineer and produce because I'm a pianist, I'm a vocalist, but sometimes the engineer goes behind the board and they mess up the vision that I had for the song. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you hear it one one way as the creative and then the engineer producer does a little something, something, and then you're like, wait, um, that's not how I envisioned it in my head. And so that artist, decided to become a producer and engineer just based on that so she could fully you know be in that and a hundred percent behind the creativity of her own music right it's important um being a producer myself having given uh music over to i remember i was i have a song called like you do and i had sent that over to another engineer And I I was working with a small label at the time and they were like, don't worry about the reference track, just send us the stems and we got it. And I go to the studio to listen to the mix and I'm like, the entire feel of the song is gone because here's all these elements that you missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's powerful. So if there's a creative person watching this, who's a vocalist and instrumentalist, learn how to produce and learn how how to engineer so you can fully be involved in your project and not just hand it off and hope that it sounds the way you want because when you're collaborating with these people you also want to make sure you have good communication so they're able to get that vision that you have behind your work absolutely so let's talk about this video that you posted about your appreciation for rock music because of the emphasis of music 
of them actually playing the instrument. So talk about how rock music influences your own musical style and composition because they play their instruments. Right. So that 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 came from, you know, part of one of my day jobs, really a night job because concerts happen at night. Yeah. But uh, the majority of music that I mix ends up being some form of rock. Mm -hmm. And the difference from going to culture, the, the cultures are different. Um, a lot of for rock, you know, you don't really have hired hands. Yeah. Those are generally, all right, we're friends and we're going to start a band and we're going to go play shows. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with more R&B, hip hop kind of things, if there's a band, it's because here's the artist and I hired people to play for me. And so it's a lot harder for them to play with bands because that's expensive. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I gained the appreciation because I'm sitting behind the board and I'm hearing this amazing music and people are soloing and showing just amazing musicianship mm -hmm. that to me, I'm, it's always been something I've had interest in doing and I've always incorporated to some degree. Yeah. But now I'm thinking in music going forward, I'm, there's changes in the music and it's not just one loop. And so where I've incorporated live elements in my music before, now I want to incorporate, okay, more changes, maybe different things that show musicianship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's important, right? Because you think of a rock show when you think of like the drummer doing his solo, you think of the guitarist doing his solo. I mean, I've seen you perform with Nia, you do your solo. And that's so important yeah. to have when you're part of a band with a bunch of instruments. I love hearing everyone do their solo. That's like a huge part because I was able to like really hear your solo when I watched you perform. Right. And yeah, those in all those elements, uh, there was a song I, I was I was working on. I, hopefully, I go back and finish. And I'm talking to some people, and I'm like, "What? What if I did a keyboard solo in a hip hop song? What? What? What would that be like? That'd be awesome. You don't. You got to do it. Like, I just think it's like because you're a keyboardist, and that's like your passion. Like, rock out with it. I might have to try it out. Okay. Well, hopefully, we'll hear that song soon. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats on opening your new studio in Manhattan. Talk to us a little bit more about this venture. Right. So uh, working with my partners, Winston Ward, Don, you know, Deal and D Photos um, and Ashley Blum, we come, we came together. Um, we've been working together for years and we really came together to, you know, move into this new space where we were looking for a place because we came from, we did really well as far as being able to attract people and bring people together in what we what was effectively a bedroom within an apartment. Yeah. Um, and we're like, we need a place that's more, that's one easily, more easily, more easily accessible, mm -hmm. but also we want more of a professional look. Right. And just the, the, the cards just all came together and we were able to work out a deal with with someone where yeah we moved into a space that has a reception area and then it has two separate rooms we have one room which is both a photography space as well as an event space mm -hmm. and so you can come there get your you know get your your pictures taken you can record some content there mm -hmm. as well you know props and everything we have all the lights necessary mm -hmm. and then we and then all right, book your event. We can do some karaoke or uh, paint and sip or any kind of relatively small gathering you want to put together. We can we can accommodate it. Mm -hmm. And then on the right hand side, we have what we call the living room. Um, the living room is our recording studio, mm -hmm. and I call it the living room because it it looks like a living room. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it, we were worried about it at one point, but it was like, what what other place can you go to? where you have a homey vibe that's not in a home. Yeah. And that's important because like, right, you have your own recording place where you create, but it's also important to have a safe and creative environment where you could just get in the zone. Right. So uh, give us the details on this place. What is it called? Where is it? Has it officially opened? Talk to us about that. All right, so we, we call it the university. 
Um, that's the conglomerate of everything that we do. That's university. We, we spell it wrong, so don't don't put the S, put the X. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's located on 38th Street. It is 545 8th Avenue. Um, it's between 38th and 37th. We're on the 12th floor. Nice. And um, we've officially been open for just about a month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're actually, this coming weekend, the 23rd, we're actually throwing a launch mixer event, networking event. And, you know, we're welcoming people to come through, to check out the space, meet some other creatives, and you never know what other connections you can make while you're there. Love that. So that's this Saturday. That's this coming Saturday. Cool. What are the details on that? 7, 8 p.m.? Uh, 7 p.m. Okay, cool. So, guys, if you're in the New York City area... It's in Midtown. Go and see Quincy's new space. It seems amazing if you're an artist, content creator, you can host a, a cool event there. So congrats on that new venture. Thank you so much. So are you are you going to be using that space to create? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, previously, even right now, I'm in a bedroom. And <laughs> We were talking about small spaces and you would not know. And 90% of the content that you've seen of me producing, <laughs> working on anything has been in my bedroom. Yeah. And uh, so it's going to be exciting or it is exciting starting to work into this new space. And uh, that's not home because the, the next step for me is for this bedroom to just be a bedroom and yeah. my work be elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, when I watch your stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this studio, but it's your bedroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like that's how most creatives are. So to have a different environment and just get some of your bedroom back because you live in New York and we all have limited space. <laughs> so it's like it's like we just want to like go to bed and not have to see our equipment, right? Right. <laughs> you know, it, it used to be my dream. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a living in the studio. And I woke up and I set it all up one day and was like, this is great. I literally wake up and I'm in the studio. Yeah. And then COVID hit, and I was dead, dead. I didn't go anywhere else, and it was like, yeah, this isn't that great anymore. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's important as a creative and just as a person in general to change your environment up because, like, something as simple, like, if you're going to bring it back to COVID, something as simple as going for a walk, that's something we all used to take for granted. But did you go on walks during COVID? When I could, yeah, sometimes it was like, all right, I need to get out the house, do something. Yeah. I don't care if it was in the earlier parts of COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to the store, the corner store, grab a snack or something, but something to do something different than stir at my four walls. I know. I felt the same way. And I was like, I really thought that walking, like, I... I liked walking before, you know, we live in New York City, but when you walk outside and you're kind of not allowed to, <laughs> right? <laughs> but like you go outside for fresh air and like sometimes when you're just going on a walk, even if it's like for five or 10 minutes, like ideas just like they happen. They like, they come to me more when I'm in a different space. So I love that you have this space for creators. You're going to use it. Your partners are going to use it. Like, that's awesome. And I'm so very excited to see where this opportunity takes you guys. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're looking to we're looking to do a lot of good things and hopefully bring a lot of value uh, to those who to those who come who come and work with us. Yeah. And I think it's important to focus on the creator community, whether a musician, content creator, you know, just looking for a cool place to host an event because that's important. Like it's it's just cool to host a bunch of people in a creative space. And guys, if you're in the New York City area, go to the event on Saturday because you're right. You never know who you're going to meet at these things. You could meet the next photographer. You could meet your next collab partner. Like that's what's up. Right. It's all about making the connections. You got to make the connections. So let's talk about the music industry and how the landscape is evolving. How do you navigate being a creative in 2024? So something that I've been giving a lot of thought to, and the, the, the main thing for a lot of us, especially those who don't have massive followings just yet, is mm -hmm. how do we figure out how to differentiate ourselves, but also do something that also works for people. And so the main thing that I've been working on is 
all right, I've tried the, all right, stick in this lane because, you know, this is what we're pursuing and realizing, okay, well, this doesn't work. And then trying this, okay, this works. And so it's, okay, well, talking to my audience and realizing, okay, what tends to spark the most interest? Mm -hmm. What makes them interested in me? What, in other words, what am I, what do I do that gives people the most value? And being comfortable with what that result is. And so one of those things for me is actually talking mm -hmm. to the camera. Yeah. And I thought it would be, all right, I'm, I'm really good at, you know, creating music and I'm really good at rapping and written, playing piano. But when I sit down and talk to the camera, that's what people vibe with the most. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause because it makes you more human. Like, yes, we all love your music. We appreciate you as a producer and an engineer and a musician, but like, who are you behind all of that? Mm -hmm. And then it also gives goes into the giving back aspect where it's people, I've been, I've heard that the best way to be successful is to give. Mm -hmm. And so now it's looking at the mindset of, Okay. Yes, we would. Yes, we want to figure out how to monetize and everything. And Spotify doesn't pay well, and all these different things. Right. Um, but if you're going to hit those milestones for people to want to give you money, it's because you're giving them something that they feel is invaluable. A hundred and fifty percent. I I love that you're thinking about it this way because you're right. You do have to look at it as like. What is the value that you're giving other people? Because, you know, you see musicians do this all the time. They'll be like, buy my new single, stream my... They just want you to do something for them. But it's like, I don't really know this person. Like, they just keep selling me every time I see them. Right. And it's like, who are they? What do they eat for breakfast? Like, what kind of food do they like to eat? Like, what's their creative process? And it's just like, I like that you're doing this. And I like the short form content that you're putting out because it just humanizes you. And you're getting traction from it, right? Right. So so out of the, the videos that you, you're doing short form, are people like asking you questions, like trying to dig in more deep? Like, how is that working for you? Uh, so far, most of the feedback that I've gotten, because it ends up falling in the semi-inspirational lane. Yeah. And so there's people who are like, you know what? I'm glad I, I heard this. I'm glad I saw this. I'm going to start applying this to what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. And I think inspirational content does very well, right? Because sometimes when we go on social, we see a lot of negativity. We see a lot of craziness in the news and stuff. But like when you see someone and they're like, oh, hey, I hope you're having a great day. Like just go outside or just hear something that I went through. And then you get that response. Oh my gosh, I went through something like that as well. Right? Like people are right. like, thank you so much for posting that because I was in a funk, but you brought me out of it. Right. And that's, that's what's important. Everybody needs encouragement. And so getting out of the, the mindset of being selfish about, oh, this is what I want to showcase and yeah. what do people need? Exactly. Yeah, that's very, very, very powerful. And more creators need to lean into that. Like, what is your why? What is your purpose? And what value can you give other people? Because it's so important. Like, we're all human. We all want to connect with people. And like the way we can do it is just by talking about our strengths, our weaknesses, day to day, like just humanizing and being a really good storyteller as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So as a musician, engineer, producer, songwriter, how do you integrate all those roles into your creative process? Ooh, so it's an interesting thing wearing multiple hats all at once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it comes in it comes in phases. Sometimes it does come all at once. And um, it's even taking things that you would do you would that you would apply to other people and applying them to you. So mm -hmm. it requires looking at yourself critically and being willing to say, All right, try this. This is out of your comfort zone. Try this. Maybe this is gonna work a little bit better. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the different vocal techniques and things I would ask of so another artist. Hey, a little less nasally here, a little bit more chest. Think it, thinking about those things instead of where the natural state of being an artist 
to me, I mean, granted, I'm not like a singer singer. I can do a little something, but yeah. is to just put out what's in your head. But then to take that back, sometimes you get out the, the skeleton version of it just to get the ideas out your head. Mm -hmm. And then now you have to go back and listen to it, critique. Okay, I can say this a little bit differently. I can add, stack, and layer the, these other, you know, on top of this particular word or or phrase or collection chorus here and there. Yeah. And also being willing to try different things. Uh, sometimes you write a song and the initial idea is nice and then mm -hmm. it's, and then you switch the music and it's a whole masterpiece now because you were willing to walk away from what the original idea was. Mm -hmm. So do you feel when you're creating, sometimes you just need to take a step back and just be like, okay, I have to walk away from this. I need, I need some air. And then you come back with a new, with a brand new idea just by stepping away. Yes. So sometimes it's that, uh, there's a song that I am working on, hopefully will be out this year called Steal You that I initially wrote in 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the music was one thing, and I revisited it about a year or so ago, and it is the, the music has transformed tremendously. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that is off my EP, Valentine's Day, I have a song called Chocolate that I thought was the most amazing thing when I, when I had it in my head and I wrote it down, and then I went to record it. And when I listened back to it, I was like, I'm not really liking this. I don't know what was I what was I thinking? I'm I'm bugging. But took a step back. I went to sleep. Woke up the next morning and said, you know what? Let me listen to this again. And I'm like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like you said, you don't know, like you think it's good, and then you're like, no, it's not good. And then maybe you just like you said, you started writing that song in 2014. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's okay. Oof, that's 10 years. <laughs> that, that's 10 <laughs> years, right? So you're like, you know, I'm sure the lyrics and how it sounded back in 2014, there's definitely different ways and things that you thought to add to it in these in these 10 years, right? Right. And it's like, you kind of have to step back and be like, oh, does this work? Does this not work? Maybe do an acoustic version, maybe take the bass out, maybe add a little mm -hmm. something, collab with someone. And then it's just a whole different ball game, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So that song's coming out this year? I believe so. Uh, <laughs> it's ready to go and I just got to finish the vocals. I, I won't say her name yet, but I might have a guest on it and uh, that's going to be exciting. Awesome, awesome. Well guys, stay tuned because Quincy is coming out with new music. So that was actually my very last question because I know you're working on new music. So other than that song potentially coming out, what else do you have coming up in the next few months? So my goal, and this is, and I, I am holding myself accountable because I said this for this for, for early this year. I said it for early last, for end of last year. I have an album that is written. And some of it is some songs that I wrote back in 2014. Yeah. And some of it's some songs that I've written more recently and putting all of that together because it has a common theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all goes well, This I'll be putting on an album this year. So that's that's my goal. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. I did, I did an EP, a four or five song short EP, mm -hmm. but I want to do a full length project. Not necessarily because it uh, affords me anything, but it's just been the goal. And also, I, I kind of want to. I kind of need to get this music out so that I can focus on new music. Yeah, yeah. And plus, you've been sitting on it for a minute. Yeah. And you're like, I just people need to hear this. Like this project needs to come out. Right. Awesome. And so, yeah, people are blowing up the chat. Uh, Crystal says, love this. Justin says, it can't wait for the new album. Yeah, we're excited. You got to come back when this new project comes out. Uh, absolutely. Love it. So for people that want to support you, what advice do you have for them? What can they do? Who want to support me? Yes. Uh, you know, the funny thing about that, ooh, I, 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 I'm going to say this the nice way as possible because <laughs> I've, I've, you find that a lot of people really don't know. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's always the funny thing where you post on Facebook, all right, release the new song and you get a hundred likes and like five people actually listen to it. Yeah. 
uh, or, all right, I'm performing somewhere, this place, and they're like, congratulations. And it's like, well, thank you, but, you know, congrats, I, you know, getting the show is not the accomplishment. The accomplishment is getting you to come. Exactly. And so I would say definitely if you support a creative, it's about direct support. So if it's some, if it's a monetary thing where you're buying something that, that they're producing or coming to support them, seeing them live, mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, thank you to the people in the chat, you know, for stuff like this showing up uh, because otherwise we'd just be talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. We would just be like talking to each other and trust me, I love this conversation, but the people and seeing their comments and seeing them get excited over stuff we say, just brings a whole nother element to the conversation. It, it does. And then you know the people that really, really, really show up for you, which is is exciting and it's fun. And yeah, I definitely think, you know, stream the music, buy the music, share it, comment, come see a show, right? Right. What else can they do? Uh, continue to let me know when you, when you, when you, when you're listening is it's always a beautiful thing. Um, cause I don't always know who's listening, you know, spot, you know, there's Spotify for artists where I can go and see what my analytics are, but it doesn't show me who's who. And so it's always an interesting experience when I come across someone that I haven't seen in a long time and they're like, your music is amazing. And I'm like, Oh, I, I did not know you were a listener, but thank yeah. you. Yeah, guys, please don't be a silent listener. I mean, I feel this is very popular with creators in any form, right? Like, don't just listen and not say anything. Share it. Reach out to Quincy and be like, hey, I love this song, such and such and such. It got me through this time. I'm at the gym right now. I'm listening to this, like, right? Because then for you, you're just like, oh, my gosh, this person at the gym listening to my album, listening to my song, listening to this thing that I produce. Like, I think that's really powerful for you to hear, right? Right, it's, an, it's encouragement. It's encouraging to keep going when you know that people are, are, are rocking with you and you're not just putting it out to the atmosphere and you don't know who's listening, if anyone at all. Yeah, don't be a silent supporter, guys, because the thing is, if you don't tell us that we're doing a good job, we have no idea. Quincy, that actually happened to me the other day. Someone said to me, oh my gosh, I love your show. And I'm like, I had no idea you even knew about my show. You've never liked my show. You've never commented <laughs> in one of the chats. I go, I had no idea you even knew it. So, you know, Quincy and I have both had this happen to us, guys. So if you like what we do, if you like my interview show, if you like Quincy's music, guys, just be a supporter, show up, like, subscribe, buy the music. The, the, the comments in the chat, are amazing as well because when we when you comment we see it if you're just watching you don't say anything we have no idea that you're in here right we really don't we have no idea you're just like a ghost <laughs> quincy well that's all the time that we have this evening but before i let you go do you have any final words for the room i just thank you for everyone who who, who came through and was, was commenting and, and watching and everything I am excited for what this year is bringing. This is going to be this is going to be a great year. Um, and Ashley, thank you for for starting the year off. Yay, Quincy! Thank you so much for coming on the show. This was amazing. When you have a new project come out or you want to promote something, please feel free to come back to my show. This was absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you for coming in for supporting Quincy, supporting Vibe with Ashley Live, guys. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe it. Please give us both a follow. Quincy Valentine, Ashley Live. And thank you guys so much for spending your evening with us. Support good music. Tell us what you think about the show. Tell Quincy what you think about the music. And go see Quincy when he's playing live. Yeah, come through. It's going to be an experience. When I finally do a live show, it is going to be experience. Yes. And hopefully you'll announce a new show soon? A live show? Hopefully soon. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. Well, guys, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, guys, for coming and spending your evening with us. Support good music. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye, Quincy. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.